Hello, good day everyone, uh, grade 8. So again, here I am, Teacher Lawrence, and I will teach you another uh, thing regarding um, typhoon. Okay, last time we discussed about the formation of typhoon. Now, let us uh, uh, discuss uh, the factor affecting typhoon. But before that, I want to have a song video. Uh, regarding hurricane and twister. So, wag muna natin pag-usapan ngayon yung bagyo sa Pilipinas kasi uh, nakakalungkot kasi maraming at sa lang pa, o oh, pag kasi yung hurricane naman hindi sa atin, sa ibang part ito ng ating mundo. So, uh, let have this video but before I play this video, I want to greet you a happy asynchronous day to everyone. So, let us play this video. And let us know what is your king and twister is. regarding to the hurricane and to a tornado uh, the t uh, that's the storm that happened in other country all right let us move to our topic which is factor affecting typhoon so uh, that starts to discuss this okay 
So warm and large ocean water, did you know that the tropical cyclone are more common in the Pacific Ocean? Okay, again, the cyclone, uh, it is located in a uh, part of us, which is the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so it, uh, it is because the Pacific has the largest body of water in warm temperature. Warm sea surface water is the fuel that drives tropical cyclone. It forms only over warm ocean water near the equator. So we have the color. Coriolis force, uh, tropical cyclones need to form at least 5 degree or degrees of latitude away from the equator. This is because the Coriolis force at the equator is zero and thus not strong enough to sustain the cyclone's rotation. So the effect of the Coriolis force is an apparent deflection of the path of an object that moves within a rotating coordinate system. Because of this, the storm in northern hemisphere spin counterclockwise, and those in the southern hemisphere spin clockwise. So, uh, let's talk about the weak vertical wind shear. So, uh, first we have the wind shear. Uh, is the change in wind the speed or direction with the height in the atmosphere? So, it depends on the height. Here, so tropical cyclone requires low wind shear to form. High wind shear will slow spinning cyclone down and prevent them from lasting a long time. So here in the Philippines, there is no stranger to um, ca catastrophic natural disaster. Uh, this country is bothered by some 20 typhoons a year. So again, the minimum uh, typhoon that happened or visited here in our area is 20 typhoon yearly. So why is this country very prone to typhoon? So there are three factors why Philippines prone to typhoon. First, the geological feature of the Philippines. So when it comes to geological feature, Philippines is surrounded with large bodies of water and beaches of the Pacific Ocean, where 60% of the world's typhoon are made the bodies of water that surround uh, the country increase the chance of a typhoon or a formation. Okay? So, uh, the second one is geological location of the uh, Philippines. The Philippines is situated near the equator where the ocean is warm, a requirement for the formation of uh, typhoon. The next uh, factor is the prevailing winds in the region. The Philippines is situated where the equatorial wind current move. The country is also long, along uh, the Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ, an area where the trade winds met. Uh, this means that once a typhoon is formed within the Pacific Ocean, the wind's direction will most definitely lead us. All right? So, like for example, of this this Ampong Yolanda and Untoy in the time of social uh, in the time of social media. All right. So let's read this regarding this uh, typhoon. For four years, I did the weather for TV5, and during times like this, I can't help but miss going live on television to inform people about the latest track of the storm or warn them about rising flood waters and the risk of landslides. But now, as also media, I see. A lot of people doing the weather reporting themselves, whether it be a simple Facebook status message on the on the flooding in their area, a minute by minute live tweet of a pong landfall, or a live stream of someone's window showing the storms horrifying impact in real life in real time. We no longer need to wait for the newsmen to refer about us when we already have the tools and the platform to deliver the news ourselves, raw and filtered will. It's because of those people, the netizen, the citizen journalists, uh, that created a more compelling reportage to some of the most devastating weather events 
in our history like Kondoy and Yolanda. There's no denying the fact after Kondoy and Yolanda social media posts have become a gold mine of content. Rescue and relief efforts were also re relied behind popular hashtags like hashtag rescue ph hashtag relief ph hashtag yolanda ph so uh, napakalitim tulong ng social media sa ngayon no? because of social media we can report and we can know uh, the, uh, the the things that happen in one area so uh, uh, that is very good to us no? uh, that is one of the uh, advantages that we have in social media as of now because in the times of typhoon and the times of uh, uh, that uh, we need a uh, rescue uh, madali na lang madalis lang pumunta and madali na tayo ma-rescue that is one of the advantages of social media so maybe you can relate to what the article here is saying about how active people are with the use of social media especially whenever there is disaster or in the case whenever there is rock typhoon in country so that is the good uh, advantage of social media as of uh, now so uh, that's all uh, uh, regarding the uh, factors affecting typhoon all right so i hope you enjoy watching this video and once again i'm teacher renzo God bless, thank you, and... Uh...